Hello, hello everyone. Good morning on our Wednesday class. Um, it's me, Kat, I'm back again covering for this morning's um, movement and energy exercises on the wood element. I think, oh yeah, we've got Basti in the chat. So if there's any questions or anything going on, or you want to know what I'm up to, if you've missed something, um, hopefully Basti will be able to answer your questions and tell you what I'm up to. Hopefully you can all hear and see me okay. As I know, a week or two ago, the connection wasn't that great. I can see everyone in the chat saying good morning. Hello from wherever you are in the world. It's lovely to have you here. I actually wanted to start with reading this little bit. I've got a few little nuggets of words and um, I guess kind of poetry in a way um, to connect us in with the, the gallbladder and the wood element energy. Oh, hello everyone. It's nice to see you. Well, visually, I can't see you, Chris, but hello. Um, and it's from Carola's book, our Shatsu theory and practice that we use a lot in our Shatsu training and um, constantly dip in and out a bit. But there's this beautiful little quote that I wanted to, to share with you this morning. And it's a, around the gallbladder and the wood um, element. Wood energy allows us to attain our maximum potential for self-expression. If we use it well, but individual self-expression is only significant when others in the group or culture can relate to it. We may not know what our individual purpose on this earth is, but the gift of our wood element is to urge us to strive equally for our own well-being and for that of the other life forms which share or create our environment. Only with this balance of emphasis is our survival ensured? I thought, whoa, maybe that's um, a nice thing to think about as we as a group collectively are working together this morning on our own self-expression and movement of what we need. And um, yeah, maybe, um, maybe that quote needs sending to the government, but less of my political <laughs> nonsense this morning. You don't need to know about that. Um, <laughs> so I thought we'd come to come and sit nice and easy. I'm going to sit on a bolster this morning um, so we can really allow the hips to relax into the ground. We can also do this sitting on a chair. And I just would like us to, if you you feel comfortable just to close your eyes and just to check in with how you're doing. You might notice there's a physical niggle. You might feel the brain and mind being really active. Perhaps it's your breath that you're in contact with. Or perhaps like me this morning, you're kind of feeling a little bit like a marshmallow and not sure <laughs> what's going on. And that's okay as well. So we're just feeling, tuning into how we're doing. And that could be on many levels. Lovely. So if we've got our hands uh, available. How is it to place one on the chest and one on the belly? And you can have your eyes closed still. Oh, I think Dinah is here. That's lovely. Dinah and Basti, what a treat. So one hand on the chest and one hand on the belly. I'm just going to allow the breath to gently move into the body. So not necessarily forcing anything, even if you're finding there's a bit of stuckness around the diaphragm, that's okay, we're going to work with that. We don't need to panic and go, oh shit, my breath's not going down to my belly, it's okay. 
So placing the hands one on the chest and one on the belly and just allowing the breath to gently pour in. And then gently release. You can open the mouth and take a nice exhale. You can sigh as well. So breathing in. And as you breathe out, allow a little sigh. We'll do one more, breathing in. And then breathing out. <sighs> Lovely. You can keep your eyes closed if you wish. We're just going to allow the hands to come away from the chest and the belly. I'm going to have a little look for just a, a small poll, just to see how we're doing. I'm going to pop this one up. I'm going to share with you. So if you have got your eyes closed, you might want to open them if you want to click on the poll is how you're coping. Are you coping pretty well and you're OK? Are you kind of neutral? Are you, re are you stressed or are you very stressed? OK, quite a few of you in the stressed and we yeah, are one or two in the very stressed. So I'm hoping by 11, we're going to all feel a lot smoother and more chilled and relaxed in our bodies and our minds and our spirits as well. Okay, I'm just going to switch back to the chat. Thank you for doing that poll, everybody. Okay, so we've kind of tuned into where we're at. and We can kind of take a snapshot of that and just pop it to one side. And at the end, we're going to come back to tuning into how we feel and we'll kind of come back to this feeling so I've got my marshmallow cloudy head kind of feeling um which isn't always there but today it is so that's okay um gallbladder channel we've worked a lot around the head we started gallbladder one from the eyes a few weeks ago with me and then Cliff's been working on gallbladder 20 and 21. So I thought we'd work a little bit more on the face to begin with and helping the eyes to become more relaxed first thing. And then I thought we could get down on the floor. I'll give some options for working on the chair as well. So we're going to work with what we're comfortable with this morning. I say, so I'm going to sit on a bolster nice and easy. We'll take the hands together. So we'll begin by sitting, rubbing the hands together. You might want to go in between the fingers, around the thumbs, back of the hands. So our energetic wash, little finger side, and the same with the other hand. In between the fingers and the back of the hand, round the thumb. And then the little finger edge. Yeah. And we're going to take these wonderfully charged up keyful hands and place them over our eyes. And it's actually where the wood element, the liver channel, that's linked in with our gallbladder, it opens to the eyes. So any screen time that we have, it really takes a little bit of a hammering on our liver and gallbladder channel. So let's take our wonderful energized hands and rest them over our eyes. We can allow the elbows to drop down or turn sideways so you can see. Elbows to drop down and really allowing the head to rest in your eyes. You can do this lying down as well with the hands placed on over the face, over the eyes. And we're just going to take a breath in. And as we breathe out, we can really allow the eyes to rest, rest in the sockets, breathing in again. And as we breathe out, we can allow the eyebrows, the eyelids, top and bottom eyelids and all the lashes to gently rest in the hands. And we'll breathe in. 
And as we breathe out, we can just allow the front of the face and the side of the face to really start to rest, kind of surrendering into the hands towards the ground. And then we'll go back to a natural breath so there's no pressure of when to breathe in or out. There never is anyway, just to let you know. Take many breaths. All right. And from here, we're gently going to allow the head back to sitting, floating above the spine. And we've still got the eyes closed with the hands over them. But the head's now come back to rest over the spine again. And we've taken the weight of the head off the hands. And keeping the hands over the eyes, if we just make a little bit of a cup with the hands over the eyes, making a dark space for the eyes to still rest. With the hands over the eyes, how is it to very gently start to open the eyes? There's no rush at all. So we've still got a nice darkness over the eyes, allowing the eyes to gently open. And our eyes work so hard for us, constantly looking, receiving information in, but a lot of the time working hard, probably stressing out, you know, that saying, stress to my eyeballs. Well, actually, we're going to give our eyeballs some love, nourishing these eyeballs. So we've gently got our eyes open under the hands. I very slowly, and I really mean take your time, we're allowing just a little bit of light in and we're not looking for anything. We're allowing the light into the eyes. The eyes are just gonna gently receive. And very, very slowly, we'll take the hands away from the face. Not looking for anything, just allowing the eyes to gently receive this gorgeous light. Perhaps you don't actually want to notice what's around you, and that's okay. Just allowing the light to gently come in and relaxing the hands down by the body again. You might want to blink the eyes, help them have a little bit of a wash. Oh. <sighs> Taking a breath and a little yawn. Lovely. Hopefully. Your eyes feel a little more well rested. I feel a lot more at ease, which is nice. And then from here, we'll just take the fingertips and you can either press or gently tap. I'll come a little closer so you can see. So we're just going to gently either press round the forehead to either side of the eye. Or we can use our fingertips, gently tapping like raindrops. So doing whatever feels good for you this morning. And we're just going to come into the side of the eye, our lovely gallbladder one that we did a few weeks ago. Might gently want to tap. Or how is it to gently circle around the temples, helping the sides of the face, sides of the eyes to really let go, rest in our face. Not forgetting to breathe, that's myself included. <laughs> so allowing the breath to just naturally pour in. Wonderful. And then we're going to take the palms of the hands either side of the skull and gently press sides of the head all the way to the back of the neck, the back of the occipital bone. Do that one again. Gently pressing from the eyebrows, either side of the head, round the ears, just to the back. And we're just going to take, you can use one hand, or you might want to interlace the fingers and use the heel of the hand. And we're going to come down, I think you did it with clitoral, then we've got the bladder here, and then gallbladders 
just out slightly in the sides of the neck. So I'm going to use interlacing my fingers and giving the sides of the neck, allowing my head to rest back either side of the neck. You can do it with one hand as well. You might want to do one side and then the other. Squeezing firmly and gently down the sides of the neck. Wonderful. And then we're going to come to the top of the shoulders. Not forgetting if anybody out there is pregnant or might think there is there that you are pregnant, being aware of this gallbladder 21, contraindicated as it sends energy downwards quite dramatically. It's great for labour, um, but not if you're um, pregnant and you want to keep that baby growing in you. Definitely a good thing to just... Um, maybe brush across the top of the shoulder instead. Anybody else, we're just going to give a good old squeeze to the top of the shoulder, all the way to the tip of the shoulder girdle, giving a nice squeeze. I've got a hold of the other arm, so we don't have to use any force or too much energy. And then I'm going to take a loose fist Allow my head to drop to one side and tapping along the top of the shoulder. Again, contraindicated, just gently brush down the shoulder so there's no pressure around gallbladder 21. Lovely. And then we'll swap to the other side, taking a hold of the other arm. So we'll squeeze from the neck all the way down, top of the shoulder to the tip of the shoulder girdle. Wonderful. So we've, we've worked actually three points already from the beginning of the gallbladder and we're going to come later to the point of the week, which I will reveal a little soon, little time soon. Ooh, my words this morning, my marshmallow head, hopefully it will clear by 11. And then again, gentle, loose fist, gently tapping across the top of the shoulder. You can use fingertips as well if that's easier than a, a loose fist. Great. And then just gently brushing down. You might want to brush down one arm and then the other. We're kind of giving a self brush hug. All the way to the tips of the fingers. Lovely. All right. So from here, um, I thought we could come down to our most gorgeous point that we work a lot of the time. I'm going to come and sit on the chair. We're going to find our feet. Um, our lovely kidney one point. So you can do this sitting down on the floor. So we've opened up the eyes, allowed them to really rest, gone down the side of the head, shoulders and arms. We're just going to take a hold of one foot. If you've got someone at home, you might want to give them a job of doing your, your feet and swapping over. So having the foot wherever is comfortable. If getting to your feet isn't possible, you can use a tennis ball or a spiky ball or like one of those tumble dryer balls underneath the sole of the foot and rolling it round on the floor to help undo the sole of the foot and connect in with our kidney one. So just underneath the all of the foot, you all know it really well, in between the big toe and second toe metatarsal. So to begin, we'll give the whole foot a really nice squeeze. So in a little while, we'll come to the floor just to do some movement. So we're really going to take our time this morning to come to standing. So squeezing out the whole foot. Yeah. And then taking a hold, I'll show with fingertips underneath, you can still have your foot under on the leg resting. We're gently going to press into that gorgeous kidney one point. Oh, we can use our breath as well. We can use the thumbs. Lovely. And then if it feels good to do so, taking a hold of the lower leg or ankle with one hand and then with a very loose wrist and palm, we're just going to tap underneath the sole of the foot. Gently, gently tapping, slowly waking us up this morning. 
We're just allowing all our stress to gently melt downwards into the ground. We don't need it anymore. We can let that go. Lovely. And then we'll swap to the other foot. So taking that one down. Ooh, left foot feels much better. So taking a hold of the other foot or using a tennis ball underneath the foot on the floor. And then taking a squeeze of the whole foot. Waking it up, kind of like if we had clay before we sculpted it into a shape, we'd warm it up to make it malleable before we turned it into something. Same with our bodies, we can warm it up before we can help shape it for the day. And then same thing again, I'm going to use fingertips, you might want to rest the foot down and use fingertips into kidney one, underneath the ball of foot between the big toe and second toe metatarsal, or thumbs, so doing what feels good, sending that lovely breath in to kidney one. And then when you're ready, you might want to stay there a little bit longer, taking a hold of the lower leg and ankle, and then easy rest, tapping underneath the sole of the foot. Ooh, nice and easy. Just thinking about our feet and breathing. That's all we're doing right now. Okay. And then we're going to allow the foot to find the floor again. Great. So from here, we're going to come and find the floor lying down on our back. So you just need a little bit of space. I'll come back to the chair in a little while and I'll offer some other ways of doing these movements. Um, I'll move that bolster out of the way. So coming to lying down on the, on the ground. I know, is it energy work exercises? Is it yoga? Maybe it's just a lovely embodied mindful practice to help us get in touch with this wood energy feeling in the body. So we're going to come and lie down on the back with the feet planted in the floor, the shoulders are relaxed and you can have the arms either side of the body or on the belly, do whatever feels comfortable. I'll turn this way a bit. I've got my feet parallel, not too close to the hips and not too far away so the fronts aren't gripping. We want them nice and easy and the knees up towards the sky and all we're going to do is allow the knees to rock very gently from side to side. We're certainly not looking for the knees to find the floor. It's really gentle because we're going to start to open up with the weight of our own pelvis. We're opening up that lovely sacral iliac joint which or will be revealed soon, coming to point of the week. We're going down to the pelvis today. So gently rocking the knees from side to side and you can go as slowly as you wish. Easy breath. So we've got this gorgeous head and eyes gently resting, nicely nourished. Easy breath in the body, rolling the pelvis around on the ground. Okay, I'm just going to show one thing. So everybody that's on the ground that wants to continue doing that, I'm going to come back to the chair quickly. So if anybody doesn't want to get down to the ground or can't, that's totally fine. We're going to come to sitting and we're going to take one knee. You can use a belt or a scarf down the leg to hold the knee. And all we're going to do is allow the knee to draw up and then we're going to take a little bit of a rock so we're easing out again the side of the pelvis. And it doesn't have to be really close to the body. You can allow the leg to rest in the arms or the scarf here. So allowing the pelvis to find some space in that lovely iliac, um, sacral iliac joint. And then the same with the other leg drawing the knee in, it can be wherever feels comfortable, gently lean back just a little bit and then rocking the leg either side. 
and you might want to alternate once on each side. Okay, wonderful. So, if people are still rolling around on the floor, that's wonderful. We're going to gently bring the knees towards the sky. And if anyone's sitting and drawing the knee in, please continue to do so. People on the floor, we're going to allow the feet a little wider and then allow the knees to fall in and touch. And we're just going to stay here for a few breaths. It might feel quite a subtle stretch or it might feel quite strong. So adjust to where feels comfortable with the feet. It's a very nice opening for the sacral iliac joint. So we hold a lot of tension sometimes in the pelvis and we can really send the breath down to the pelvis and into this joint, allowing the sides of the hips to really kind of ease off, allowing the breath in. So as well as our eyes and head being nourished, we can nourish either side of the pelvis as well. Easy breath. You can allow some sighs in as we exhale. <sighs> Lovely. Then from here, we're just going to allow the knees to come apart again, drift apart and wiggling the feet a little closer back into parallel. I'm just going to check the time because I've got a lovely amount of things that we could do this morning. Um, I want to make sure we can fit them in without feeling stressed out. We don't want too many things to do. Okay, so if we're lying on the floor, we're going to roll to one side. You might want to get a cushion for your head or one foot in between your knees. And we're gonna soften the knees, bring the knees up and have one leg on top of the other. And then resting the head and underneath arm out in front of us like this. And the top arm, just take my stuff. Top arm's gonna come palm to palm with the other one. Um, don't worry, I'm gonna come and demonstrate something for sitting if floor things aren't comfortable or possible. And all we're going to do is have a gentle breath and we're going to allow the top arm, I think we've done this a very, very long time ago, we're going to allow the top arm to draw across the underneath body and we're allowing the shoulder girdle to come with us. So it's not just the arm moving on the underneath arm, we're brushing the arm, opening out a bit like an archer, opening out the arm. You might be able to undo and fold out into a T-shape with the arm on the floor. If that's really tight this morning, you might just want to stay with the hand on the shoulder or the chest or the same shoulder as the hand moving. You might even just go to the elbow. And then we're going to draw back down by brushing back down the arm. And then a little bit beyond the fingertips. I'll come back a little bit. So reaching a little bit beyond the fingertips. So we're gently easing out the body in the side. You can allow the hip to draw back as well so we don't have to hold that. So it's much gentler on the lower back. A gentle side opening, side twist of the body. So gently opening, only going to wherever's comfortable, even if it's just to the elbow and back again. We're gently rolling out the sides of the body. All right, so I'm gonna come up and sit and show something for sitting. You can do it on the chair or sitting on the floor. Let's have a little look. Okay, thank you, Basti, for doing that. Okay, so coming to sitting. So everybody on the floor, continue to roll the arm, brushing opening the side of the body and when you're ready you can roll to the other side and do the same so sitting we can do this by coming to one side palms together and then we're going to press the arm across the other side of the body so we're coming through the center 
and then my left arm is sending my right arm to open up sideways across the shoulder and then allow that hand to come come down to the side and this one's going to brush down the side of the ribs so i'll describe this a little bit better this time so i'm going to move to my right so that's your left hands together move across the center arms away and then as the left arm opens up the right arm pulls across brushing across the chest relax the arm down that's long and the hand on the chest move down the side of the body down to the ribs so hands together on your right side my left the hands move away across the center of the body so we're gently opening out with a little twist the right arm or your left arm opens out sideways brushing the other arm across the chest relax the arm down and then down to the ribs so everybody else who's on the floor or maybe you want to give this one a whirl as well we're gonna be on the other side so we're allowing our other side to gently open out and it might be that one side's much easier or smoother than the other so we're only going as far as is comfortable uh -huh, my left side's much tighter this morning and that's okay only going to wherever is comfortable Cool. So we'll take our time and do a few more of these. No rush. We can still be the joy of our wood element. We can still be organized and get decisions made and things done, but there's no need to rush. I'm still learning that one, by the way. So it's a nice thing to remember. There's no rush. All right, and then drawing the hands together. And if we're sitting, just allowing the arms to come either side of the body. And if we're lying down on the floor, gently taking your time to come to sitting. There's really no, no rush. <laughs> no rush to come to sitting. Taking your time. I'll check in with the time. Great. Wonderful, half past. So we've come to sitting. You might be cross-legged or you might want to sit on a bolster or in a chair. And we're going to come back to allowing the pelvis to really rest down towards the ground. So there's more space in the sides of the body and allowing the spine to gently float up towards the sky. We're going to place the hands on the thighs and kind of like those don't know if anyone remembers those funny weevil characters with the round bottoms that roll around and never fall over. So we're going for this feeling in the pelvis. So all we're going to do is gently lean forward and roll around the sitting bones on the pelvis, allowing the sides of the body and the spine to gently circle. It might be tiny, you might really be doing a small movement. We might really want to open up. This is where your free expression, your self-expression can come in. You can do what feels good here. Gently rolling round. Not forgetting the head as well. You might want to take the head gently round and allowing the jaw to be relaxed as well. Wonderful. And then we're going to go back the other way. So take your time to change direction. And it might be that the other side wants to be a little smaller or a little bigger. So even though we've got one side working slightly different, that's all good. We do what we're, we're just going with what we're working with this morning. So gently easing out the sides of the body. Oh, easy breath. Wonderful. Just going to gently roll that circle into a lovely spiral. Gently, gently, gently taking our time. Wonderful. Until we're spiraling in and coming to sit in the center again. Easy pelvis, easy shoulders. 
relaxed eyes and the face and jaw and our feet have been worked as well. So I thought from here we can gently make our way up to standing. I'm going to do some dough in around our gallbladder and liver channel, our meridian. So take in your time. Also, I would just like to put out there, if you'd like to come and just lie on the floor and rest with the feet apart and the knees together and you don't want to come and do some dough in, it's completely up to you. I can't see you anyway, so you can do as you please. <laughs> so gently come up to standing. Yeah, take your time. You might just want to ease out the feet and the knees and the hips. Yeah, have a little wiggle and a shake out. Maybe a yawn as well, taking your time. Ooh, wonderful. All right, so into our easy parallel. And before we begin doing a doing, how is it just to take the hips from side to side, softening in the knees? So aha, our point of the week is around the pelvis, and it's the wonderful gallbladder 30, which I'll show in a little while after we've done some dough in. So it's actually either side near the greater tridcanters on the pelvis and the sacrum. So it, you might want to place the hands either side of the hips and slightly to the back towards the glutes. We're gently opening this part of our pelvis and our body. It can be gentle as well. Wonderful easing out the hips from side to side. Wonderful. Might want to be a bit more vigorous and soften in the knees. So do what feels good for you this morning. I've just tuned in and mind went, oh yes please, I need a little bit more of this. So you might want to go a little smaller still. Great, easing out the sides of the body. Okay. So to our dough in, so let's allow the hips to find an easy place on the top of the legs. The feet are relaxed, we've opened those up already, spacing at the ankles, the knees, the pelvis at the front, and the spine and ribs can gently float all on the top of our wonderful roots of our legs. Okay, we're going to come to fingertips. I thought actually we could start either side of the head, gently, gently tapping. So it's not the usual doing route. I'm going to take us on a little bit of a journey. So gently tapping either side of the face, either side of the eyes, very gently with the fingertips. And then round the sides of the ears. We've done this one already at the start. Either side of the neck to the shoulders okay and then we're going to release one arm allow the palm to sweep up and over soften the elbow and the palms facing up towards the sky so if there's any shoulder issues draw that arm more in front of you than above your head okay the other hand is going to use the little finger edge and we're going to come from the armpit all the way down to the hip and we're gently tapping the sides of the ribs. So using again, a loose wrist. I'll come a little closer so you can see the action. Either sides of our body, from the armpit to the hip. Oh, allowing the breath in. Okay. Lovely. And then sweeping the arm down, we're gonna sweep the other arm up and over. Same thing, having the arm wherever feels comfortable. Little finger edge of the other hand to the opposite armpit, down the ribs, all the way to the hip. Ooh, this side really needs it. <laughs> and then again, top to bottom. So we're tapping out, tapping down, away from our head, all the way down into the ground. So all our stress can melt away. Easy breath. And once more. Lovely. And then allow that top arm to flow all the way back down and ease the hands. And now we're going to come to the sides of the hips. You might want to use the palms. So I'll turn sideways. 
either side of the hips here and then into the glutes, the sides. I like to lose a loose fist here. Oh, actually, it really needs it. Today, you might find that it just wants to be a bit more gentle. So do what feels good for you. Go to the pressure that feels good into those glutes there. Soft knees still. And we're going to come either side of the pelvis and we're going to run down the sides of the legs all the way to the feet. We're going to come up the inside towards the front of the pelvis again. Softening the knees and only go as far as is comfortable. It really doesn't matter if we don't get to our feet. So softening the knees, relax the head, either side of the legs towards the knee. Outside of the legs, into the feet. And then from the big toe, up to the inside of the legs, inside of the knees, thighs, all the way to the front of the pelvis. We'll go a couple of times, not forgetting to breathe, either side. We're going to get in this wonderful gallbladder point that we're going to come to in a minute. Sides of the legs, all the way down to the feet, making sure the head's relaxed. And then up the inside of the legs to the front of the pelvis. And then once more, if you're feeling dizzy, stay standing and rest. Either side of the legs, all the way to the feet. Keep the head relaxed. All the way up the inside of the legs and then to the front where our channel ends here for today. Yeah, and then we're just going to take the hands and rub them round our hara. So we'll go the way the digestive system works. So from the right hip up to the right ribs, across to the left ribs, down to the left hip, right hip, right ribs up and over to the left ribs, down to the left hip. Easy breath. Gently rolling that round the belly. Wonderful. And then drawing that circle into a spiral, smaller and smaller in. So it rests just below our belly button, our dantian, our wonderful center. Easy shoulders, feet are nice and spread, planted in the ground, and our eyes are still resting in the eye sockets. We'll just take a breath here, breathing in nice and deep, as far as is comfortable. We can allow the shoulders to draw up and then breathing out, really releasing. We'll do one more actually, breathing in. Allow the shoulders to draw up and then breathing out. Undo the shoulders, allow the ribs to be easy. And then we can take the hands away from the body. Okay, you can stay standing or come to sit. I'm just gonna get this nice image up. Our point of the week, ho oh, ho. I think we've got it on a nice slide here. It is a wonderful gallbladder 30. It's quite a delicious point. It's one of my favourites because in our shatsu practice, um, if there's any sedation, um, if there's any stagnant energy in the liver or gallbladder channel, this one is really good for sedating. But I actually found that it's also really good for nourishing the channels. So we don't have to go in so vigorously and so deeply, we can think about nourishing our blood, which the liver channel governs, which helps the whole key um, be spread and moved easier through the body, smoothing it out, smoothing out the joints, smoothing out our sleep, our thought. It's just a very good point. Um, and it's got a nice name to it. Uh, one book here I've got is called The Leaping Circumflexus. On Cliff's slides that he's put up, he's put The Jumping Circle. And I have this other book here, our points book. It's also called The Jumping Circle. It's quite amazing. When you press it, sometimes you do jump or it twitches a little bit because it's quite a strong point. It's the meeting point of the gallbladder and bladder channels around the pelvis. 
it helps our joint pain and our buttocks to release and really good for sciatica. So I want to read a little bit about the point in this book. I think Cliff uses this one very often. Um, so it's located one third of the distance between the greater trochanter, which is the top of your femur on the outside, and the sacral hiatus, which is the edge of your sacrum. Oh, Jane's heard of it, the bouncing ring. Yeah, exactly, like ripples on the pond. That's a wonderful name, I like that. So the image of this point, the name refers to this point's position near the hip joint, a pivot for the circumference flexure of the lower extremity, as well as its influence on the hip joint mobility. Leaping, which suggests rapid movement, refers to the stance of a person assumes prior to leaping with bent legs, which aids the location of this point. The function strengthens the lower back, benefits the hips, dispels wind and cold. Um, so we can often get things like liver wind in the body. Um, but yeah, I won't go too much into that. Um, it also helps the sinews, helps relax the sinews in the body and transforms dampness. So let's find it on ourselves. Oh, I think Kim has another little question. What other points can be added to nourish whilst bloods, white blood cells have a cancer patient who has to delay the next chemo because of white blood cell count has fallen? Mm. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, liver three is pretty good. I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of Basti whilst I move on to us finding this lovely point on the body. So I'm going to stop sharing the slides. Shout in the chat if you want to see it a little bit later on. So I'm going to close that. I'll come up to standing to show you exactly where it is. So what you want to do is find the sides of your hips, the bony part, and then we're going to move back to find the edge of the sacrum and it's in between the back of the sacrum, the edge of the sacrum and the greater trochanter. Mine's about here. Yep, um, it twitched already. Quite jumpy circle this morning. All right. And we can find this point. So I've got it either side here. We can do it standing if that feels good and we can either press in or like we did with the dough in we can give this one a nice kind of pat with the dough in either side of the sacrum and between the grated to the counter or there is another delicious way of finding this point and we can do it sitting lying on the floor or leaning against the wall either with the the fist or a tennis ball so i'll show it leaning up against the wall. So I'm a little way from the wall, about a foot uh, width away. I'm going to lean against the wall and then place one hand under that point and then roll on to the hips. You might want to do both at the same time. And then with knee soft, rolling the pelvis onto the hands, onto that point between the greater trochanter and the, the sacrum on the edge of the sacrum kind of feel a little bit like a bear on a tree. So you can do this standing and then gently come away from the wall or you can come to lying down. So have a little play with what feels good. Same thing as we did earlier um, with the feet flat on the floor. Gently lift the pelvis up. You might do just one and then the other. And you can use a tennis ball here too or the fist or both here and gently rolling the pelvis over the hands or the tennis ball. Tennis ball becomes a little easier because I find you can kind of lengthen the leg away and use the hands on the floor to roll around the tennis ball. It's quite a strong point. If it makes you jump, that's okay. It's, hence its name, jumping circle. Yeah, so rolling over this gorgeous point. Oh, yeah, mine definitely needed it this morning. I hope it's doing okay for you, not too uncomfortable. Okay. 
Lovely. And then releasing the hands, whether you're on the wall or lying down, and then rolling over. And it's going to gently come to sitting. I think we've got just a few more minutes. So there's several ways to open up this space a little bit more. So if you'd like to try something sitting, and we'll come to just do a little bit of swinging from side to side to ease out the channel. One last time before we wrap the class up to really make sure we can shake off all of the things that we came to the class with this morning. So what we can do is take one leg. I mean, seeing how flexible you are, you can have knees on top of the knees. So I've wrapped the knees round themselves and dropped. If that's too much, I'm going to come down each level and show what we can do depending on how our bodies work. So you can have the knees stacked on top of the other, allowing the pelvis to drop down. And then all we're going to do is gently lean forward. Ooh, it's definitely opening this part of the sacrum. I'm going to do it quickly. Please take your time in doing it and then swapping over the legs, crossing over the other knees and gently leaning forward here. Not forgetting to breathe and then coming out of it whenever feels comfortable. If that's not possible with the hips or the knees or however we're feeling this morning, you can have one leg out long and then cross the other one over just to rest wherever feels comfortable. But as long as the knee's facing out, and then we're just gonna gently do the same, gently leaning forward. It might be a little bit of a stretch there. All right. And then bringing the leg up, same thing, stretching that one forward, and then gently leaning with the knee out. So this is how we can get into that stretch there opening the leg here and then coming to sitting so if you want to play around with this one please do or maybe one leg long and the other one across if that's not working for you i've got two in standing so gently come into standing so you can be against the wall with the feet as well and all we're going to do is lengthen one arm up on the the arm that's down, we're gently, gently sliding the hand down the side of the body and it's helping to open up the side of the ribs and the hip and it will go into that point. We gently take our time and then allow that hand to come down to bring us back up to standing and float the other hand up. So we're using the wall and then taking that hand easy down the side of the body, opening up that side even if it's just a little way. And then the same thing, that arm's gonna bring us back and then undo. So there's this. There's another way. And then we'll just come to a little bit of free movement before we wrap the class up. So the other way you can do it is having your feet in parallel. I'm gonna take my left foot behind my right and I'm gonna um, keep the back leg, so it's my left leg, nice and long. You can soften the front leg, so I'll come sideways a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is lean towards the my right side. So I've got my left leg behind and I'm leaning towards the right, like a bit of a banana, but it's really getting into that point here and then coming back up and then uncrossing that leg and the same the other side, stepping the foot behind, softening the front leg. So you might gently allow the pelvis to dip backwards. So it's opening that point in between the greater trochanter and the sacral iliac, the sacrum at the back, that sacral iliac joint a little bit. Gently melting down the side. So we're kind of bananaing out this side of the body and then coming back up to standing and undoing the leg from behind. Great, I'm gonna check the chat. So if you're not standing, calming up to standing, I hope everybody's doing all right. Wonderful, Basti's on it. So we're gonna come up to standing just for the last little bit. We've got perfect amount of time into a wonderful parallel. You can also do some swinging sitting as well. We're gonna to come to our belly, our wonderful hara allowing it to be full of breath. 
Okay, and imagine it like a lighthouse. So it's going to shine out this gorgeous light out onto the horizon, allowing the knees to be soft. And we're going to keep this lovely space here so we don't collapse in the knees. We're going to keep this lovely space. We're going to allow the hips to gently sway, the spine's moving, and the arms are just going with the movement of the spine. It can be quite gentle. Or if you want something a little more vigorous, allowing the arms to really swing out. I'm sure we've done this plenty of times before. So anytime you're feeling dizzy, you might want to keep your head looking forward or come to a standstill and taking a few breaths. So as we're swinging the arms out, we can also come to our gallbladder 30 point. I'm going to come to the side so you can see. You can allow the back arm to tap the opposite um, point. So allowing the arms to swing round and tap the opposite side of the pelvis, gently opening up that gallbladder 30 as we do our wonderful double weighted swing. All right, I'll come back round to face the front. All right. So whatever speed and rhythm we're at, we've still got the feet nicely planted in the ground. Yeah. Easing out the ribs, the shoulders, the jaw still relaxed as well. And the eyes, the eyes are resting in the sockets. All right, and we're going to gently wind it in, taking our time to let it go. And I'd just like a moment for us to kind of do any free form of movement. So we're still riding on the wave of this swing. You might want to start to move the feet. You might want to come to a standstill or allow the hands and arms to join in. You can yawn, Ooh, opening up the body, just a little bit of free time, free movement that you want your body to do. Really don't care what it looks like. <laughs> um, allowing the body just to undo, kind of feel and follow being inquisitive with your movement this morning and it can be much smaller. I don't know, I kind of feel like mine's got some sort of energy that needs shifting. Ha oh, ha. Undoing, undoing, releasing, following that movement. All right. And then we're going to gently shake the hands out and the arms into the elbows and the shoulders, wonderful. And then release the arms and we'll do the same with the legs, gently shaking out one leg, the foot and the knee and the hip. Same with the other one, foot, the knee and the hip. And then coming back to parallel and just taking the pelvis from side to side, gently swaying, imagining you have a huge tail, maybe a cat tail, or maybe you're more like a lion or a tiger swaying behind you. We're gently going to come to standing, or maybe you want to calm and sit. <sighs> Checking in with the breath. You can have your eyes closed if that feels good. Just allowing the breath to pour into the body wherever it's going to this morning. You don't have to force anything or rush anything. Just allowing space in the body for the breath to fill. Wonderful. Ooh. The clock is chiming 11. So I think we're at the end of the class. I did want to share this one little tiny, tiny bit 
about November. I think I read from this book a couple of weeks ago about the Celtic year begins in, in around the same end when we have Halloween. And just one tiny little um, goodbye, everyone, if you have to go, I understand um, you have to go for that. But there's basically one tiny little bit I'm going to read from our, my Environmental Arts Therapy in the Tree of Life book. So as November draws to a close, we plant our seeds of change in the belly of the earth, in the crumbling body of our old lives, and we wait. They will not grow yet. They require a season of stillness, dormancy and descent, and so do we. So I really like that. Our seeds can start to really descend before our springtime next year, which is connected to our wood element. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, you're really, you, oh, I'm really glad you're feeling all right. Um, I didn't have a chance to do a poll of how, we, how we're feeling now, but I really hope all that stress has melted away. Any time of day you need to rub your hands and just rest them over your eyes, to help with nourishing our liver and gallbladder channel, please do. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye and thank you, Basti, Dinah, for being in the chat. I hope that's been all right. Yes, I am a happy marshmallow now. I'm a bit more awake too. <laughs> all right, bye-bye. <laughs>